And my name is Jean-Francois Boivin, and I'm associate producer on Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Oh, ready to go again? <laughs> you don't need to ask. <laughs> One should always have the freedom to choose. What's that? Probably just training exercises. We are following Desmond's story in Brotherhood. It's a continuing story of Ezio Auditore, obviously, but uh, Assassin's Creed is first and foremost Desmond's story. So we are pushing that story forward a lot, and we're actually starting to close some doors that we've been opening uh, since the beginning of the license. Um, for us, it made complete sense to continue the story uh, on a historical level. Uh, if you take a look at what happened with the Borgias, uh, at the end of 1499, the Borgias uh, story was just beginning. And uh, Ezio's story in AC2 was about becoming a master assassin and growing up into becoming a master assassin. And for us, it made sense to give the player the fantasy of what it is like to be a master assassin and bring it one step further and not only that, but be the master of an assassin order. So, uh, and there's also the other part when we went location scouting uh, two, three years ago uh, and we went in Rome and it was like, hey man, this, is, this city could be a game in and of itself, just the sheer size of the city and whatnot. So uh, all those three uh, components together uh, made complete sense uh, for us to continue Ezio's story. Desmond's story is the critical line of the entire franchise. Uh, it's the common denominator of all our games. Uh, I don't know how... Um, I, I can't see that far into the future to see if there's going to be always a, a second or third episode in a historical setting. Uh, for now we're doing it uh, with uh, Ezio because it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, then we won't do it. Uh, we, want it to, we always want to stay true to, uh, to uh, the intelligence of our fan base and uh, not cheat them over uh, for the sake of you know, uh, making a quick buck or something like that. It has to be. It has to be quality. It has to be uh, deep, and it has to make sense. Uncle, be careful. I will. Do you think, like with Ezio, I mean, are we going to see a kind of a story arc come to a close, or is it going to be open-ended? Are you going to leave yourself open for more games, comics, and stuff like that? Um, on a convergence scale, again, I can't really comment on that because uh, what I do for a living is I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm. I'm not, I'm not really involved in all the business aspect of uh, multi, uh, uh, multi uh, uh, media or uh, you know, transmedia uh, type of approach. Um, so I, 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 can't, I can't really say, but all, all I can say is about Desmond's story is we're going to start closing doors that we've been opening since the beginning of uh, the Assassin's Creed franchise. So for those of you who've actually finished Assassin's Creed 2, there's a big WTF moment at the end. And uh, there's going to be a bit more explanation on uh, how that's evolving. There's lots, lots, lots of improvements. Uh, I can name you four. Uh, the first one is the fight system. I, I'll go back to uh, saying uh, respect for our, 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 our fan base. We have a great relationship with our fan base. We talk to them all the time and whatnot. And Assassin's Creed 1 was, oh my god, amazing, jumping everywhere, beautiful graphics, blah, blah, blah. Kind of repetitive. So please, more variety. Uh, that was our main focus in Assassin's Creed 2. Uh, we nailed that uh, very, very uh, eloquently. Um, one thing that came out a lot was the fight system is still a bit sort of slow paced, it's still a bit uh, defensive centric and we wanted to reward those who strike first or are a bit more aggressive but at the same time we didn't want to make it exploitive so uh, we upped the AI, made them a bit more aggressive, a bit more numerous in their, uh, in their uh, sort of pack. Uh, so that's one thing, we worked on the fight a lot. Uh, we worked on the horse a lot because uh, Rome being uh, that size, it's actually three times the size of Florence. Uh, so we wanted to have the horse in the city. Uh, we wanted to do advanced fighting with the horse against other NPCs on horses. Uh, there's the Rome upgrade system that we took from the villa, the auditory villa in Assassin's Creed. But we've expanded that and put that in Rome in its entirety. Uh, that's a huge component, and of course, uh, the name of the game is Brotherhood. So it's the uh, just the the, the 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 fantasy of recruiting new assassins, teaching them how to become an assassin, and uh, making them grow and make them become master assassins. 
It's very much everything that you had, all the features that you had, all the gameplay elements that you had, all the mechanics that you had in Assassin's Creed 2. And on top of that, we're adding uh, the Rome upgrade system, we're adding the Brotherhood component, we're adding uh, advanced AI, advanced fight, uh, the, uh, the meta AI in regards to uh, the entire crowd and whatnot. Uh, so we're, we're continuing uh, development on that. Assassin's Creed 2 was out last year. I mean, how do you go to get a full sequel out in a year? I mean, that must be pretty hard to do. It's very hard to do. I'm glad you asked that question uh, because the answer is quite simple. Uh, it's, 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 it's about, it, I, I'll say it's twofold. Uh, first of all, uh, in a typical in a typical cycle of uh, game development, you have you know your your, con your conception, then your pre-production to prove your concept, then you get approved for production, and then you ramp up in resources, right? So you go up to 150, 200 resources, and then you produce the game up to the point where you start submitting to first parties. Uh, and then at that point, there's a huge ramp down of resources, and then you go back to another cycle. What we did was we, we, we kept that, that uh, level of resources. We did not ramp down, and we kept that production velocity that we had at the end of AC2 going right into uh, Rome. So we already knew uh, we wanted to do Rome, so graphic department, start on Rome right away. We already knew we wanted to upgrade the, 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 the fight system. Uh, we wanted to uh, you know, work on the AI. Uh, we wanted to work on a bunch of different gameplay elements, so we just kept everybody and just said, start working on it right away. Uh, the other aspect of it as well is our tools are fantastically stable. We've been working on Anvil for Assassins for over seven years now. Uh, and of course, there's uh, our friends in Singapore that's still helping us out. Our friends in Quebec City are now helping us out. There's the guys in Annecy who are doing a great job on uh, multiplayer. So for all these reasons, that uh, uh, enables us to do a full single-player campaign in a year. How do you respond to that sort of accusations, I suppose you could call them, that with the development cycle so small and not that much of a visual upgrade, that it's kind of Assassin's Creed 2.5 kind of thing? I mean, how do you respond to that? Well, it's not because the, the amounts of content that we're offering is uh, equivalent to a full single player campaign so right off the bat uh, it's it's a full game second of all we are upgrading so much we're adding so many new features and so many new components to it um, that the way I would respond is uh, wait and play and just like people were waiting for us with a baseball bat at the beginning of AC2 just hoping to hate us and hoping to bash on our game they came out of it saying yeah okay bravo well done uh, I'm expecting the same kind of response this time around. There's a, a definite improvement in the artistic direction uh, that we had. Uh, we went more to our uh, core values that we had in Assassin's Creed 1, basically meaning a, a more crisp image, uh, a more uh, full texture uh, image. Uh, any, you know, we, we all have limitations in regards to having an open world and being able to see really, really far and being able to render textures really, really high. So we're continuously working on, and this is still to this day, like right now as we speak, we're working on optimizing it. So what you saw there is basically what we have up until now. Uh, but I expect to have a much more uh, uh, impressive uh, visual uh, thing to present. The thing for me with Assassin's Creed 2 was that the lip syncing was pretty, pretty terrible to be honest at times. When have you taken that as feedback from the reviews and the forums and looked to improve that? As you can see in the cinematics department, yes it has been a major focus. Uh, overall, it's not been that much of a major focus. I think we, personally, I think we do a better, uh, we, we do a, a better job than most games that are out there in regards to facial animation. Um, uh, performance. We're continuing to uh, develop that. Uh, we're continuing to develop our rigs, uh, develop uh, you know our skins and whatnot. So uh, we do want to have a much better performance uh, this time around in, in the animations. Now, I'm personally not working on uh, the next opus of Assassin's Creed 3. It's not, it's not even you know in production uh, yet. So we, we do know that there's going to be a next Assassin's Creed, obviously, because um, Desmond's story is not over. Uh, the franchise is still very much alive. Um, as, as to when it's going to be released, it's purely speculation. I have absolutely no idea. I know your plan, Ezio! The Pope told me about you and your little group of assassins. Empress! 
to be the gun his friend fashioned for us. We've had too much bloodshed. I think the cleansing is in order. So consider this an invitation from my family to yours. <laughs>